Good morning, everybody. Thank God for another Friday. Thank God that we're able to uh, get together once again to uh, share God's word with each and every one of you. And uh, at this time in our social distancing meditation, I'd like to share a verse with you in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verse 5. And it reads this way Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Uh, I'd like to talk to you this morning about collective faith. And now we found the definition of faith in the Bible in Hebrews 11.1. 1, and it says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith is confidence. Faith is sureness. Faith is a firm assurance that what we are praying for what we are waiting for, what we are expecting will come to pass. Now, to go even further with our definition of faith, we can say that faith is believing that it's going to rain even when there is not even a speck of cloud in the sky. Now, that's faith. Brothers and sisters, the main idea of this chapter in Mark is that Jesus is the Son of God and that his divinity outweighs the law and Jewish tradition. In this chapter, we see so many times that Jesus was doing things that have the teachers of the law or the Pharisees trouble. Now this morning, the thing that got my attention in our verse and where we will find our thought for our devotion is the first three words of, of verse five, where it says, seeing their faith. Jesus saw their collective faith and because of their faith, we see that Jesus didn't just bring physical healing to the paralytic, but he also give him spiritual healing. In our reading this morning, we see Jesus heal this, this person that was, that, that's that been sick for a long time because of the collective faith, collective faith of his friends and their actions in cutting a hole in the roof and lowering him down to where Jesus was says that, that Jesus has the authority not just to heal him, his body, but also to forgive him his sins and 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 Jesus forgave his sin then it proves it by healing him in his body Jesus calls him son of man call himself son of man in this chapter a safe title for him to use at this particular time and juncture in his ministry you see this pa this paralyzed man was brought to Jesus by his friends because they had faith that Jesus could heal this man physical ailment. They had no idea that by bringing him to Jesus that he would receive something far greater than physical healing. He also received forgiveness for his sins. When we say we have forgiven a person, for the most part, we mean that we have restored our relationship with them despite of the wrong that they have done to us. Of course, we cannot erase or change what had happened, but when we understand the, uh, the, the meaning of the Greek word, I, I feel me, in the Bible, we come to understand the forgiveness that Jesus is talking about goes be far beyond human forgiveness. For it includes putting away sin in two ways. One is the law and justice are satisfied. For Jesus paid the penalty for our sins and the penalty that our sins deserve. Only Jesus was able to pay. Consequently, they can no longer be held against us. And number two, the guilt caused by our sins is removed and replaced with Christ's righteousness. We are so forgiven that in God's eyes, it is as if we had never sinned. If Jesus had done this and nothing more, the man should have been satisfied. If Jesus had healed his body and not dealt with his sinful condition, the man would have been ultimately become worse. Brothers and sisters, don't miss the power in the word forgiven for the, for the forgiveness given to the paralytic is the same forgiveness offered to each and every one of us this morning. 
if we trust in the Lord, if we accept the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross, we receive that exact forgiveness that this man received on that day. See, forgiveness is the greatest miracle that Jesus ever performs because when you think about it, forgiveness meets the greatest need and it costs the greatest price and it brings the greatest blessing and the most lasting result of our lives as weirds be put it. Another thing that is clear is that this paralyzed man and his friends was, was not going to let anything stop them from getting to Jesus. It seems as if they would go to any length to bring someone that they care about to Jesus because their collective faith said to them that only Jesus can do something for their friend. I'm, I'm pretty sure at this point, they have already already spent a lot of their money in the doctors of those days to try to get some relief from for their, for their friend, but it was to no avail. But the thing that draws my attention to this, to, to this collective faith is that they all believe they were all in one accord and they all know if only they can get to Jesus, their friend will receive the healing that he needed. And as they were pushing through the, the crowd to, to, to find some temporary physical healing for their friend, they didn't even realize that they were getting their friends, to, getting their friend to Jesus to get the permanent spiritual healing that will last him for all eternity. Brothers and sisters, I am reminded this morning when reading those those words that are in our verse that Jesus saw their faith which means that Jesus witnessed their collective faith. And this makes me think of Christians that think that they can navigate through this life alone. Christians who think that they don't need others. To think about it this morning with Jesus who all, who all by, who could, could have done everything all by himself, but he, he chose to have people around him. He picked out uh, uh, 12 disciples and, and Jesus was not alone and and we see even in the uh, in those days when he was about to go to the cross he called out a few disciples to go away so they could stand in prayer with him he could have done this all by himself but he 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 was giving us that perfect example that we needed reminding us that we need each other we need each other to help us carry our our, our burden to else help us carry those load that we cannot carry on our own these brothers and sisters are just examples that Jesus wanted us to follow. We need to carry each other to the Lord. When one is feeling weak, the one that is strong at the time can carry the other. I don't know about you, sometimes life circumstances, life burdens can be overwhelming and that is why God places us in a family where we can lean on each other's faith this morning. The Lord wants to remind us that we need to surround ourselves with people that can help you carry your burden. People that will break the roof to get you to Jesus when you can't do it on your own. The question that you need to answer this morning is who do you surround yourself with? Who's your best friend? The people that you call your best friend when you are facing difficulties or challenges, can you count on them to bring you to the Lord? My friends, when Jesus saw this man's friend's faith in action, he had to bring spiritual healing and then physical healing to this man's body. The Lord is telling us not to be a lone wolf Christian today. Let's bring our collective faith in believing for a family member, for a married couple that's going through struggles, for a wayward a child this morning, for a friend that's going through some pain right now. Let us join our collective faith in bringing that person the Holy Spirit is placing on your heart and your mind right this minute and, and bring this person to the Lord and see what he will do. You see, Jesus is always ready and willing to forgive sins. 
Jesus is always ready and willing to heal somebody that is sick in their body, but we need to do our part. Just like this paralytic man's friend would not let the crowd stop them from taking their friend to the Lord, the Lord is asking you this morning, are you going to let the crowd, the noise, the issues of life stop you from bringing this person before him today? If one man's faith can move mountain, can you imagine what our collective faith can do today? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you this morning. Thank you for those words. Thank you for the reminder, oh God, that Lord, our collective faith, oh God, is, is so important, oh God. And Father God, we just, oh God, thank you this morning, oh God, because of, of this, this man's a uh, paralytic man, coll uh, friends, collective faith, oh God, he, he was able to receive, oh God, healing in his body, forgiveness of his sins, and 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 Lord God, we just we just thank you this morning because, oh Father, we we want to be reminded every single day, Lord God, that Lord, we we need to we need to come to you, not just for us, but we need to bring, oh God. Our, our, our friends, our families, oh God, those that are in need, that we need, we know, oh God, could, could, oh God, get some healing from you, Lord God, to bring them to you, Lord God. Father, Father, just, just oh God, quicken our heart, oh God, place, oh God, those people in our mind, oh God, even right now, Lord God, that we may bring them to you, Father. We thank you, O oh God, for this day, Lord God. Thank you for these words, O oh God. Uh, Father, we pray, O oh God, that you will bless, O oh God, each and every single person that will hear those words, O oh God. Help them, O oh God, to, to O oh God, not just, O oh God, hear those words, but they will practice what is said, Lord God. Father, we thank you. Bless us, keep us, protect us, O oh God. Let us, O oh God, have a great and, and safe day under your protection. We thank you, O oh God, once again for your word. We thank you for this ministry. Bless, O oh God, this platform, O oh God, where we can come, O oh God, weekly and share your word. We thank you, Lord God. Have your way in us, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. Once again, may God be with you. May his blessing be upon each and every one of you. Uh, and and we, we just, we're just so grateful this morning that you were able to join me. If you were blessed by these words, please go ahead and share it with someone. May God bless you. May God cover you. May his light shine upon you. May he give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name, have a great and safe day under God's protection. I love you with the love of the Lord.